about yourself. Tell us about yourself, your uh, academic qualifications, your experience, if any, and your main hobbies. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I am Shrija. I come from Hyderabad, a Telangana district. I have done my graduation in Bachelor's of Medicine and Bachelor's of Surgery, sir. Uh, post that, I've done one year internship in Usmania General Hospital and Allied Hospitals. And uh, so my hobby, sir, I, I sing Telugu classical music and old Telugu songs. And uh, I like writing diary and I perform regular meditations, sir. So tell me, in terms of development, uh, of technology, yes, sir. how would you rank Hyderabad compared to uh, among all the all the you know metros and big cities of India? Sir, Hyderabad has been a booming city, uh, not just in IT sector but also presently in pharma sector, sir. Even the real estate sector is uh, uh, is very good in Hyderabad when compared to the other metro like Chennai and Bangalore. And even it plays, it has the second longest uh, metro rail route after Delhi. So I think it occupies the top five place. Among the top five, the top three place or top two, Hyderabad can occupy so, based on the investments it is getting, the kind of facilities or ease of services it is providing to its citizens. And also the kind of opportunities we get to, we get to access in Hyderabad, I think uh, it uh, does have potential to be in top three, sir. So, Shrija, you, you are a doctor. Yes, sir. Now, tell me, uh, ever since the second wave started ebbing and subsiding, yes, sir. So I would say the second wave is still there. Yes, sir. The, 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 medic, the medicine fraternity, the doctors, you know, they have been speaking with so much of confidence that within six to eight weeks, the next wave will come. Yes, now, what is so special about their knowledge on coming in of third wave, which a normal person or the people in government uh, may not know? What is it, you know, you being a doctor, yes, sir. what extra knowledge or wisdom they have to predict? Uh, sir, I think the extra uh, regarding the extra knowledge, the kind of uh, environment they have been in the past two years, probably that is making them uh, say so, sir. And also the knowledge regarding the chances of variants which can emerge in the viruses, uh, which is which can occur in a fraction of second in a huge population or dense population like India, sir. And social, uh, the social norms which the population has to follow day in and day out, they come, they get to see in the patients they come across, and uh, th those could be the practical aspects which probably are making the doctors to predict that six to eight weeks could be the pro probable date after which the third wave can emerge. Yes, sir. This could be one thing, and also sir, the vaccine hesitancy. The vaccine hesitancy being there, the doctor get to know why uh, the patient don't want it to go, go for vaccine. Probably this also makes them understand that probably the people out are not very serious regarding the pandemic. So yes, uh, I do think this, uh, these are few things probably which make them different from others. See, my assessment is that it is basically the government asks doctors to make these statements based on nothing but statistics in order to create awareness because they have better credibility than than a joint secretary of the health ministry what do you say uh, sir in that case uh, the complete fraternity cannot say the same thing sir uh, and also if at all uh, and if at all it is true also it is always good that the prevention is better than cure so i think such kind of uh, statements when passed by a medical fraternity and when they are taken up by the public in large in a very in a good manner it is always good that third wave can be prevented so even though it is right or even though it is wrong it has advantages on both the sides a win-win situation so yes sir i do think even though it is a government stance it, it could be a right one so srija tell me i i read that the same the same uh 
medical doctor, uh, on one hand, we see that within six to eight weeks or maybe in August, it is going to set in. And at the same breath, in the same breath, he is suggesting that primary schools can be started. Yes, sir. Uh, be probably because, uh, sir, uh, education is also one of the very important things. And primary schools, as, as far as the ICMR survey says, sir, uh, almost 60% of the population, including the children, have already got the antibodies. And probably this is the time for uh, opening the schools. That could be one thing which they would be assessing, sir. But I don't uh, consider it as a good step unless until the vaccination rate at least covers the 60 to 70 percent of population at least. Right now, it is just at the stage of 33 percent for uh, those people who have taken the first dose. So at least we should be in such a position that the vaccination rate for at least first dose crosses 70 percent. Then opening the schools would be a wise option, sir. But Shrija, I read another doctor mentioning somebody authority, health authority of the government, saying that there is nothing like herd immunity. Unless 100% vaccination happens, there is no surety. Sir, um, that could be because uh, even though with one strain, there could be herd immunity, a virus gets mutated. So a mutated virus, a population which faces the mutated virus has have to again uh, develop specific antibodies sir so the herd immunity which the population would have got for example the delta variant itself couldn't uh, couldn't exactly combat with the next coming variants probably that was the scientific basis on which the person would have given such kind of statements sir. so Shriya, this zero prevalence survey has already proved Yes, sir. That 68 percent people have already developed antibodies. Yes, then sir. you said 70 percent is the uh, you know normal herd immunity level. So now we should be just carefree and uh, relax. Sir, I don't think so. That should be our stance, sir. Right now, after seeing the second wave. Uh, firstly, sir, scientifically speaking, there there is still a virus which is moving around, the second wave is still continuing. And it is a pandemic which can still spread across the nations. And uh, thirdly, sir, uh, if at all we think, uh, we think we start lagging the social norms and all, the variants, the variants can generate and uh, can spread across the population which is not getting vaccinated. There are children who are below 18 years of age who form a very large chunk of our demographic dividend. We cannot uh, let them get uh, the disease only because of our uh, our choice to get liberated from the kind of norms we are facing right now. So I don't think that should be our stance right now, sir. Right, Shrija. So Shrija, I pass on to Mr. Khanna for yes, the sir. next round of questions. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Shrija. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Shrija. Uh, you did your doctorate in 2018 MBBS. Yes, sir. And after that, you appeared for medical services examination. Uh, sir, I've uh, done my final year in 2018, sir. Post that, we have a compulsory internship till 2019. Th then uh, in 20 till 2019 to 2020, I had to prepare for civil services. And along with civil services, I thought as a financial backup, I need to give a uh, uh, medical services exam also. So yes, sir, that was the reason I've given it. So if you are selected in medical services examination, yes, sir. for which you are a VP wizard, uh, will you choose that or uh, will you uh, surrender that and uh, wait for civil services outcome? Uh, sir, I've not cleared uh, the test, sir. But if at all, I would have cleared the interview also of uh, common medical services. Then I would have uh, surely taken it, sir, because uh, I I believe in financial independence, uh, which gives confidence to any person. So I would take it up, sir. But still, I would pursue my dream of uh, uh, civil services examination. Uh, just now you talked of. 60% antibodies in yes, the uh, population of India. 
Yes, sir. So there is one school of thought which says that India had highly uh, underrated the COVID figures, yes, not sir. only the COVID infection, but yes, also sir. the COVID death. So what yes, is sir. your uh, uh, view after this antibody 60% figure is out? Is it due to, uh, is it reflective of wrong uh, picture being presented before public? Uh, sir, as far when we compare the survey, zero survey with the kind of statistics we are getting regarding deaths and uh, cases, um, I do think there has been a disparity, sir. And uh, contributing the same to any kind of official or institution, I don't think so, sir. Uh, because because of few reasons. One thing, uh, in rural areas, when uh, deaths occur, uh, the probable reason why the death has occurred could be because of uh, multiple reasons, sir. And uh, COVID-19 could also decrease the immunity. For example, COVID-19 could decrease the immunity. It could have affected him for secondary infection and could have uh, resulted in death. So the exact cause of COVID-19 couldn't be identified even by the doctor who is technically equipped. The same thing, even registering the things on the part of administration, we are still in the process uh, to be accurate, to be 100% uh, uh, tallying with the actual actual percentages and all. So in that uh, scenario, uh, I do think there, there would be some kind of disparities within the official figures and the kind of zero service which we are seeing. And also we can say that uh, uh, COVID-19 infection affects uh, most of the population in a mild degree also, sir. That is also one reason that uh, most of the people who, do, uh, those who wouldn't have uh, got the symptoms could have developed antibodies. So this could be a few reasons, sir, because of which I could say there could have been a disparity, which which could have been obvious. Okay, China's uh, population policy uh, is much yes, uh, in discussion, especially China now permitting three child, uh, three children policy. So yes, uh, how do you assess this uh, situation? in China and what are the uh, uh, results that you would draw for India? Uh, sir, uh, one thing regarding family planning or reproductive rights is it should be a voluntary thing. Anything made mandatory on the common people may not work on long run. This is what we have learned from China. And probably the same thing has to be even learned by India because our total fertility rate has already reached the optimum 2.1. And so it is time probably to look at the proper governance measures uh, regulating the consumption patterns rather than going for strict measures. That could be our uh, take on uh, from China. Supreme Court recently commented on uh, uh, private hospital billing of COVID patients. And it yes, talked of these hospitals as uh, industrial houses, something like, you know, completely based on profit. So what is your opinion on corporatization of medical services? Should it be corporatized or uh, how do you view it? Sir, um, personally, I don't think any kind of field has to be commercialized, even though if it is corporatized. Uh, and when we deal with uh, such a kind of sector, like health sector, it is good that private players should occupy a major chunk because they bring in technology, which is very important to save lives. But then uh, there should be a balance in uh, trying for innovations, making money, but also equally saving lives of people suiting to their requirements, providing qualitative services. Sir. So I do think, I do consider, sir, that uh, the corporatization to a very large extent has resulted in uh, private exploitation in health sector. And uh, this could be contributed uh, by uh, everyone, sir, that we never made health as a priority in any of the, uh, in any of our plan. And secondly, on the part of the uh, upper middle class section who never who never have chosen government hospitals as something which they have right to go instead they have chosen private hospitals as some uh, some better alternatives probably when uh, 
when it is time to speak, when certain sections of population couldn't stand up, that would uh, result in such kind of scenarios. Sir. So I do think corporatization with commercialization is something which should not be accepted. Okay, uh, two quick questions. Uh, Olympic yes, 2020 has started. Yes, sir. So are you, are you interested in uh, uh, following it up? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me, tell me ten interesting facts about Olympic twenty twenty. Yes, sir. Uh, the unique facts which are specific to twenty twenty. Yes, sir. Uh, Olympic twenty twenty. Speaking about Olympic twenty twenty, ten unique things. Is first thing, sir. What Mirabai Chanu today has made us proud of winning silver medal in weightlifting. And second thing, sir, almost greater than 40% of representation from India have been women this time. And even uh, International Olympic Committee has made it a, uh, made it a thing that a woman representation is, should be increased, at least to the level of 50%. And uh, it was made possible by many other nations like US and European Union, and even China sending almost women to a percentage of 60. That is quite a good thing in uh, arena of sports, sir. And uh, most important thing, there has been increase in number of athletes which we have sent also. And our expectations uh, of uh, making it to a double digit uh, medals have, is also a positive thing, sir, because we were, we were limited very much to the single digit uh, medals only. And uh, yes, and, and one of the most optim optimistic thing is uh, such a large event is happening in the times of pandemic, which makes us uh, feel good that uh, things could turn normal very soon. And the slogan has been changed? Sir? What is the change in the slogan of Olympic? Sorry, sir, I'm not aware of it. The word together has been added. Uh -huh. yes, okay, last question. Uh, yes, what is what is difference between fiscal deficit, revenue deficit, and primary deficit? Yes, sir. Uh, so, fiscal deficit is the difference between uh, uh, revenues and expenditure which the government makes in uh, simple terms, sir. And uh, revenue deficit also goes in a similar line. Uh, primary deficit uh, is different from the other parts. Uh, uh, primary deficit is uh, when uh, is when the capital investments are not included, sir. Or the, uh, sir, exactly I couldn't recall it now. It is loans or uh, the capital investments which are uh, involved. It is loans, sir. The, lo uh, the interest which we pay to the loans, that is removed, uh, that is uh, subtracted from the revenue deficit, then we get primary deficit. Okay, thank you. Over to you, Sumesh. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, Sucha. So I would like to continue the discussion on economy. Yes, sir. So uh, when do you think India is going to achieve its target of $5 trillion economy? Uh, yes, sir. It could be sooner. I hope that it should be sooner, sir. But uh, the issue of pandemic is moving around. And uh, it could be very soon, sir, probably in 2030s. Because we were thinking it to happen in 2022 or 24, but because of pandemic, which pushed us uh, many years uh, back, uh, I think it is uh, optimum to make a chase by making a new timeline again. So it could be anywhere around to 2030 to 2035, where our dem demographic dividend can be reaped to achieve the 5 trillion target. So can you tell me about the challenges in implementation of financial inclusion and any ways to address the challenges? Yes, sir. Uh, so financial inclusion challenges is uh, firstly, sir, technology. Technology can make many people to come into line, but uh, the access to technology, the way how the technology has to be used, the awareness regarding this is a big challenge, sir. And second thing, sir, uh, financial inclusion should also include the women and marginal sections also, where uh, the proper awareness or institutional mechanism couldn't penetrate in a very uh, good way. And third thing is literacy. Um, in financial inclusion, the other thing could be the way the private players or other bodies could make kind of apps which are more accessible to the people. 
um yes sir this this uh, this could be few challenges which i could cite and the uh, ways in which uh, it could be tackled could be uh, use uh, taking the help of uh, civil society organizations sir. the self help group uh, the kudumbasri self help group of kerala is a good example which we can replicate uh, pan india to bring in financial inclusion and uh, secondly sir we can also make apps which are accessible to the common man in the languages which they speak regularly that can also make them use the normal upis which we are using presently in a very larger extent and third thing pradhan mantri jandan yojana which has already been implemented should also be uh, checking the errors and uh, should be implemented with the same vigor that could be uh, other steps sir. and we can even take help of the students sir. Uh, the students can to a very larger extent uh, make their uh, parents learn the different steps which are involved in uh, financial uh, credit mechanisms and all that thing when we make a part of cur curriculum of the students that becomes all the more easy to the administration to make it possible that financial inclusion does happen government of india yes, has sir. proposed compulsory internship for mbbs students in ayush yes sir yes. what are your views on that sir i think it's a very good step because uh, whenever it's always good to have more knowledge of uh, various uh, various things when you are in a kind of in any kind of profession so having uh, knowledge regarding the modern medicine when a person gets access to the ayush medicine firstly sir his knowledge arena is going to horizon is going to increase second thing the kind of prejudices which he would he or she would have had regarding that uh, part of medicine would would be cleared and thirdly sir it could be a next uh, step where uh, probably this intermingling of medicines can help the public in larger extent so yes sir it's a very good step uh, do you think usa's decision of leaving afghanistan before september 11 is a mistake so personally yes sir i do think it's a mistake because uh, it is a war half done it is always better that war war should be either won or to be lo uh, lose lost because that will make the winner that will result in a single winner so but this kind of thing when happens uh, the people around are going to face the grunt of uh, both the sides who have been in the process of waging war and all so yes sir, i do consider that is a severe uh, that is a mistake on part of us even though saying the same us was having its own interest which it has to consider when looking upon its own people sir the pass on to chairman sir yes so srija you are aware of uh, belt and road initiatives yes sir so european union has also started uh, one such initiative at their level are you aware of it um sorry sir i'm not aware of it not aware of it all right now tell me this space we have seen two yes, uh, billionaires traveling into space yes sir so as they say it's the beginning of space tourism yes sir now i am talking in the context of our country that since privatization of space program has already happened in western countries especially us and yes, of course britain uh you think india should also start uh opening itself you know to the private sector in the space program yes sir i do consider india has to open up and instead it has already opened up also to sir establishing the organizations like uh, nsil and um, uh antrix limited and all and uh, also its uh, policies of geospatial uh, uh, liberalization policy which it has recently released is also one step which can contribute to the space sector to a very large extent sir firstly whenever we privatize a, a kind of sector like space innovation comes in funds comes in and uh, that could bring in uh, more and more progress in sector like space where even the farmer can benefit and even a person a businessman can benefit so yes sir it is a very good step if we start liberalizing space sector so sreeja we have 
covered a lot of areas and have asked me quite a few questions in the last 25 minutes. Now, the last question uh, I could ask would be from any, any topic or subject of your choice. Sir, my choice would always be music, sir. I enjoy singing, yes, sir. Now, uh, these days there is so much of uh, emphasis on meditation to bring peace of mind. Yes, sir. In the earlier days, it was said that music is the biggest source of bringing peace to mind. Yes, sir. Now, how do you rate music as a stress buster? Sir, personally, it is the best. Uh, is, it is the best medicine, sir. And when combined with meditation, it is all the more, uh, it is all the more uh, best, further best than any other thing. Because medita meditating along with a smooth, pleasant uh, music will make a meditation more and more, uh, it increases our concentration, sir. It makes us tune into the kind of pleasant moment we were, we are pre presently in. So, I, I just don't want it to read music, sir. I would in, in turn ming, I would in turn try to add meditation into it and rate in the best com, combination which could ever form. So is it the doctor's advice or Srija's advice? Sir, personally, I've experienced. Uh, so not it, it would be better if I say it is my personal advice. Okay. So Srija, we finish our interview now. <laughs> So, Shreja, it was a good, good conversation with you and you have very good personality. Thank you, sir. Confident, smiling and yes. positivity and um, also knowledge. Only thing is presentation of knowledge. Somewhere I found you were longish in your replies. Yes, sir. So, it happens uh, only under two circumstances, either you don't know a thing or you know too much about it. Okay? Yes, sir. So, in your case, it was, uh, you were not able to, you know, uh, focus on the core, yes, sir. core issue. Mm -hmm. So, that happened in two or three questions where, uh, like, antibody is 60%. Mm -hmm. So, I asked you on the school of thought, which says, we misreported the figures. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, so that that reply was, you knew the answer. You also bring, um, brought it out, but it was very long reply. Yes, sir. So just just uh, be precise. I think same observation I would give uh, uh, in another case when I talked of uh, hospitals being made into corporate houses. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. So that you knew the reply. Yes, sir. But uh, try and be be more precise. Yes, sir, surely. So that is uh, one advice. Your fiscal deficit and revenue deficit, you said, are the same thing. Uh, no, sir. Actually, I I couldn't exactly recall those terms. The technical terms I couldn't uh, recall. Then I was uh, I said so, sir. They are not same. Actually. Yes. So hmm. you you should never. Uh, hmm say that they are same thing otherwise why why this question mm, yes. okay. then um, so uh, that was it i think we we discussed these olympics was uh, good there are many more first uh, which are attached to this no no uh, viewer this time so it is uh, yes sir olympics minus minus yes, yes sir so uh, that's it. So just focus on these things, your conversation. Again, I, I think in the conversation, it was more like question answer. What I felt it was less of conversation and more of question answer. So try and uh, uh, correct this mode. Chairman will also guide you. Yes, sir. So Thank from you, my sir. side, uh, only these three observations. Thank you, sir. Otherwise, you, you have very good personality and uh, everything is good. Thank you, sir. Over to you, Vinodji. Yeah, thank you.
So, Srija, you you have a very good uh, personality, yes, uh, pleasant to talk to. Uh, you. you were conversing very well. I tried to, you know, ask you or come back with many questions uh, on both Hyderabad as well as on the third wave, and yes, then sir. zero uh, prevalence survey and all matters related to your profession. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm very happy that you were able to uh, answer them very well. When I say answer them very well, there is no single correct answer. You, know? mm -hmm. you have yes, your own views, but you you were able to feel them very well. And uh, you did not come out with any extreme uh, suggestions. You, know, you were basically trying to uh, balance it out. Uh, uh, and that's why, you know, I could gauge that you own a very balanced personality, which is very good. Thank that you, is sir. your the best strength. Uh, coming to your knowledge, uh, out of the medical uh, education knowledge, you have to brush up some more things. Economy, international yes, affairs also, and yes, current sir. affairs. Mm -hmm. So generally, you know, professionals like you, you know, they work in such a focused environment mm -hmm. that I have seen the profession of doctors. You know, they hardly know what is happening around in the world. So from their angle, it is fine. They are focused on their profession. But today when you are appearing for an interview where they will see you more as an aspirant for a civil, as a civil servant, rather than an aspirant for a uh, appointment of doctor in our India Institute. Yes, sir. So the reason why we ask you questions from your background is because, you know, it is part of your dad. And uh, normally one also tests how much knowledge you have in your own original sphere. So there you were, you know, almost 100% uh, uh, very good. Thank so, you, sir. Current affairs, international affairs, uh, depth of knowledge, you know, and uh, economics, as I had mentioned, Mr. Yes. Karna has also mentioned. So these are some of the things which you need to brush up, go out yes, of sir. the medical. You will be able to answer any question related to medical education. So just don't concentrate on that, except for latest, you know, things related to the medical line. Yes, sir. That to current affairs. Uh, the latest Supreme Court judgments, orders, mm -hmm. you know, just go through them very well yes, so that yes. you are, uh, you know, aware of all this. Yes, uh, otherwise, uh, your performance, I was very impressed. Thank you so uh, much. By, by your uh, answers on space tourism yes, and sir. the space program. And of course, all the questions which I asked in the first round. So, we have rated you very high, Srija around 64%. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, uh, you you were very balanced and gave a, you know, overall the feeling after interview is very pleasant. So it's just that some knowledge, you know, portion has to be updated. Yes, and uh, if that were so, you would be in the 70 plus range, certainly. Thank you, sir. Communication is good. You felt comfortable, you were smiling, conversation mode, Mr. Khanna has mentioned. So let it be in that mode even more than what you have done. And uh, otherwise your fluency was good. Yes. So just knowledge and some of the points which have been mentioned to you and you yes, are sir. through. So any questions, Srija, you have from us? Sir, conversation mode, how should I uh, develop, sir? See, it should be, as Karna Sahib has also mentioned, I'll just add from my side. You see, when the answers are longish, mm -hmm. you know, you tend to come in a narrative, you know, descriptive, uh, yes, explanatory mode. Uh, yes, sir. You, know, you are not into a, neither you are appearing in any TV interview. Uh, yes, sir. Right? Number two, nor you are addressing the students. Yes, sir. Sure nor you are discussing with your friends. Yes, sir. 
so leaving apart the or nor are you in the class answering to the teacher yes sir right hey. so i could get it sir yes so there is nothing out of these four so take out few things from each of them and question is placed before you you are like if you remember we were discussing in third wave yes sir you know that that is the conversation okay sir i look into the video again and uh, i'll get it you know i was i was asking you question you were thinking and then you were answering something when it comes from within when you have to form an idea when you have to give your views yes sir you it when you are not recalling something okay when you are not retrieving some information some idea some knowledge oh this revenue deficit what is it let me know. so you come in that question answer mode okay yes sir so that means when you are speaking from your mind from your within mm. then you are bound to be in the conversation mode you cannot be cut 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 you know keep speaking fluently okay, you will yes, you will think of an idea all right zero prevalence survey 68% herd immunity so you will think and then you said no sir it is a fact that you cannot rely on 68% you have to be very cautious now that is how you were conversing okay yes sir so when it is straight away asking you how is hyderabad better than this 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 yes. you know then it becomes a question answer mode you know yes. because you are basically reading out what you know yes so bring that third wave conversation mm. you know into every answer sure sir what else Uh, sir uh, quite often they ask me and uh, many people say it's uh, very important to, for you to establish why you are coming to civil services because yeah. a doctor coming to civil services that when covid 19 times it's a big thing which you have to cross if you wanted to get good score or all all the things i do not know whether this question was posed by kanna sir did you ask her about civil services no no oh, no i i didn't ask her because i thought there were too many questions that <laughs> we were asking on her so, but, medical uh, profession ha uh, but kanna sir this could be a likely question from her very yes, likely <laughs> yes hamare se bhi miss ho gaya so uh, shrija you will certainly be asked this question yes Sir, can I say it, sir? Like just within one minute. Do you? Uh, I just wanted to know whether it is going on well or not. Because quite often I am saying the thing, people start saying, "How can one thing change you?" Uh, it is not so motivating when you are speaking in this way. Uh, it is my reason, but quite often I get to hear these things. Sir. So let us hear you out. What? Yes, how would you reply to this? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Surely, uh, sir. I have always been a. enthusiastic student in sciences and uh, during my graduation i got to i got to get it from my seniors that civil services is also an other option which we can explore after graduation at the same time i was even getting exposed to the complex societal issues as and when i was speaking with the with my patients during my graduation and uh, and this made me to explore the civil services and what an administration administrator's role would be in the society sir and there was an inspiring story of miss um, divya uh, district magistrate of asifabad district of telangana sir who had uh, who had made uh, extraordinary changes with uh, implementing ordinary things sir she worked for the gon tribal groups in asifabad district she uh, she made she made innovative measures like appointing uh, l- language uh, translator she herself learned gond language within 2 to 3 months and uh, it was result of all her efforts that tri- uh, the tribal groups in asifabad are uh, quite independent now and uh, as a result they even remember her by naming a village in asifabad on her name as divya guda that shows a tri- uh, kind of trust she built in the groups which is very hard to get it sir for any kind of person and uh, even i as a person want the same kind of things sir contentment in uh, the work which i do and uh, cre- uh, being part of a larger platform where i as an individual grow and also take the people around with me to visualize the change i wanted to see so that was the reason i had to move from mbbs to civil services <laughs> आप आप कुछ बतलाएंगे विनोद जी आप थोड़ा सा आप, आप इस मामले में आप मुझे अच्छा करते हैं 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I only want to say two things. Number one, your reply was very long again. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Number two, there was a time when doctors were not allowed to take part in civil services. Yes, sir. Thereafter, yeah. this, this option was open. Hmm. Now, yes, sir. you have an option where you can apply. Number two, yes, you always uh, have a right to yes, choose the best career that you think for yourself. Yes, sir. Same question when I asked an IIT graduate that he is an engineer, uh, why he would like to come. Their only re reply is on the uh, virtues of civil service. How okay. this civil service, being in civil service, will uh, meet with your aspiration and uh, this is the best career option that you think for yourself. Yes, sir. You have not been debarred. You have not been banned from applying. Yes, sir. So it is, it can be a theoretical question, but then uh, even as a doctor, you will be contributing to the welfare of society. Yes, Maybe sir. On a much bigger scale. Yes, sir. Because in medical profession, while not, uh, you know, in any way showing medical profession on lower pedestal, mm -hmm. you can always talk of the virtues of civil service at a higher pedestal. Uh, sir, uh, can I say Divya ma'am's uh, story like that was a real life motivating fact? No, no, sir. No, no, Only virtues. No. no, no, no. Very long. Very yes, long. Sir. Only the virtues like contentment in work and the, all. The more you speak, hmm. you are number one inviting lesser questions. Okay. Number two inviting more counter questions. Hmm, and sorry. your focus of the interview will get completely uh, diverted. Am I right? No, aapne, you have advised her bilkul on the same lines which I always thought. Divya's story should be totally deleted. Yes. And uh, number two, also never say that, sir, I did an MBBS so that I can, my uh, medical knowledge can be applied to, you know, the in civil services. You know, this is also total no no. Mm -hmm. So whatever you said, uh, Shrija, just now, yes, sir. I would, I would not uh, approve. Even your, you know, after you did your college, somebody told me that there is a better option. Why don't you go? Now you presume that you are aware of what all career options are there. The moment you pass your tenth, you know, yes, this sir. is a normal presumption. Yes, sir. And if, if you say that I realized it after I finished my MBBS, then it means that you are not a prudent person. Okay. So you must be like a normal person. Sir, so I had been eyeing and I had been always wanting to be in the public services. Yes, sir. I had to ultimately appear in the exams, civil services. So there's an age prescribed for appearing. I was, as far as subjects are concerned, I was inclined towards, uh, you know, biology subjects more. So I thought, let me take a profession. And I had to choose something at that stage. Yes, so sir. when you get into MBBS, you are just 17, 18 years. Mm, yes, sir. So, will you wait just being 12th pass for the civil services? No. You will do something. Yes, sir. So, you have chosen MBBS. You have become a doctor. Yes, sir. So, that is your first graduation degree. Hmm. So, I was interested in this line. So, I took up uh, medical MBBS. And the moment I got into, I was able to complete and became eligible to appear. Yes, I started preparing for the civil service examination. Yes, sir. And I always had liking for civil services because of I wanted to be in the public services. And then whatever you said about Divya, the last two, two, three lines. Oh, yes, sir. You know, virtues, as Mr. Khanna has mentioned, the good mm -hmm. things about civil services without criticizing your medical life. Yes, sir. So that is the best answer. 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, no, sir. Sir, okay. if at all they'll ask me to sing a song, should I choose a... They, they will. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs>